white man in boxing. Where the flare cops. Shout out to Goodfellas Sports TV. Woo! Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellas1Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellas since you get 18% off. We out. All right, Virgil Ortiz Talk to Ring TV. Basically, that is Golden Boy. Um, they purchased uh, Ring Magazine a few years ago, and that's kind of took the, the flair off the lineal title because you can't have a promoter owning the lineal title because there's a conflict of interest there. But he says that he down to fight Terrence Crawford next. Let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Now, when he comes to Earl Spence, he said, oh, down the road, I'll fight Earl Spence. But he's ranked, I believe, in the top five of the WBO. He's pro he's headlining Golden Boy. They first card back July 24th was actually supposed to be Ryan Garcia. But you should have seen my previous video. I dropped and that explains that. If you haven't, this will be the video I dropped before this one, God willing. But, um, you know, he'd he be breaking it back, breaking them back in and uh, versus Sammy Vargas, right? And um, Sammy Vargas fought Amir Khan, I think Earl Spence. Or somebody else of that nature. So, um, I don't like the opponent coming back. But he ran through Mauricio Herrera. I'd like to see him at least try to get a belt at 40. But it was so jam-packed with the tournament and all that stuff. So, I understand he, he grew. He a really big kid. And by, by the time you blink, he could be at 154 pounds. Um, but, you know, he says, you know, I've been historically dug by fighters. Crawford has been dug by fighters. I think he a top pound-for-pound -pound guy, top five guy. Skillful. You know, why not? You know, I'm down for it. And Ortiz is 15 and 0 with 15 knockouts. Um, pro, pro resume is pretty good for a prospect. Like I said, he beat Mauricio Herrera. I think he stopped him. Um, beat Antonio Rizzoco. You know, I think it's it's things to be desired from him. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, he may not have too much time at welterweight left. You know, he's a young kid and he's gonna continue to grow. Um, but you appreciate the ambition. You know, this is kind of like. If he fight Terrence Crawford, this would be like Tyson Fury stepping in to defend the respect of the UK from Anthony Joshua Duck and Deontay Wilder and Fury stepping in and fighting Wilder. This would be like Virgil Ortiz defending the great state of Texas, you know, when Errol Spence is supposed to be actually the one that's doing the job, but Ortiz would step in and say, you know what, you know, I step in and I fight uh, Terrence Crawford when y'all hero Errol Spence don't want to do it. So, you know, I, you know, I put respect on Texas name from that aspect. So you got to respect it, you know, that he want to jump in there with him. Now, will Golden Boy want to do it? He can talk it like he walk it, but will Golden Boy actually want to do it is the question. They actually trying to get Tashira to fight Terrence Crawford. And Crawford move up in addition to weight class, which would be four. So he would win titles at 35, 40, 47, 54 before the majority of the 147 pounders ever rubbed two titles, two, two titles together from two different divisions. Danny is the only one I can think of that's done it, unless you you uh, consider an Adrian Broner an active fighter, which he's an active rapper. But, you know, I like Ortiz a lot. Um, I think there's a, le a lot of questions to be answered about him. I'm not as high on him as most, but I haven't really watched him to break him down to the T like that. But I've seen um, that he's an aggressive fighter. He got power. Robert likes him. Robert Garcia, uh, I think he's one of the top trainers. Jose Ramirez likes him, and they think he's going to go far. So, excuse me, it's a hot day. But, um, yeah, I like, I like, you know, I like him. He's aggressive. But, you know, I start coming up with a prospect checklist or a young fighter checklist after Adrian Broner disappointed. And one thing we haven't seen from Ortiz is can he take it on the chops? One thing we haven't seen, can Ortiz deal with different styles? Can he deal with being pressured? Can he deal with the slick style? Can he deal with the counter punching? You know, can he cut the ring off with somebody that's fleet of foot? You know, can he go a hard 12? Can he go a hard 10? You know, like Anthony Yard, had he stepped up a lot better in his resume, maybe he would have got the experience versus another fighter to know to go to Kovalev's body. And maybe he would have beat Kovalev with a little bit more seasoned assault on his resume. Okay. And that's what I'm worried about Virgil Ortiz. He hasn't really stepped up. Now, I think he should have fought Ray uh, Robinson, which would have been a better step-up fight for him. I don't know if he was prepared or not. Loopy fighter, rangy fighter, slick fighter. So we would have been able to see how he deal with that. 
But Crawford got so many levels to his game and so many dimensions to his game that he tough. He probably longer than Ortiz. You know, he can punch. He can stick and move. He can fight you from the in the gray area of the pocket. You heard Timothy Bradley saying that. It's only a few fighters that can really operate from that 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 uh that area. He can fight you on the inside, he can fight you on the outside. Ortiz, you know, would just go in there and get plumb whooped, to be honest. At this point, unless he is just truly special and he dig down deep. But this ain't Yard and Kovalev. This ain't an old lion. This a lion that don't drink vodka. This a lion that stay in shape. This a lion that's a natural 47 pounder. This a lion that's probably one of the two or three biggest punchers at welterweight. I think he probably he might be one of the biggest punchers at welterweight. Um, you know, it's a guy that can switch from righty to lefty. You know, it's just it's a lot of experience and it's a lot of skill. Now, if he was a one dimensional fighter that come forward, or you know, all he knew how to do was like just stick and move like Saddam Ali, then maybe I'd be like, you know, you know, maybe I'd be like, oh, maybe Ortiz got a chance. But the dimensions are so nasty here, man. The experience is so drastic between the two, and I don't think Golden Boy would do that, especially with Ryan Garcia. You know, being an enigma right now, don't know what he gonna do. Don't know if he want to model underwear and fight, you know, uh, YouTubers or do he really want to go in there and actually, excuse me, fight the best. So, you know, especially with Canelo, it's been rumored I've been saying he's supposed to lead Golden Boy in a few fights and go over to the matchroom with Eddie Hearn. So, do you really want to gamble with the one star you do got? You don't recognize the black fighters you got like Travell Maziano out of Austin. Um, you don't recognize, you know, Rashidi Ellis. Um, you don't recognize those guys. So, you know, Virgil is pretty much one of the guys you really got. Julio Cesar Martinez, he's with Matchroom. He's a Canelo fighter. A few Canelo fighters are with Matchroom, and people don't believe me. There's rumors that he might jump ship. But from that fight, you know, Ortiz is not ready. Strong kid, um, he probably going to get stopped. And it might be a Fernando Vargas situation where he might get raked in that fight. Too much power, too much skill, switch hitting, you know, too many dimensions. That's a dangerous fighter to fight, but... I admire his admirations. I admire that he want to be the best. But, you know, if I'm him, I'm looking at fighting Ray Robinson, Saddam Ali next, guys like that. Um, you know, then I'm trying to look. I Maybe I look up to, to try to fight the former champions, you know, um, Mikey Garcia. Or well, he want to fight Mikey because his brother trained him. Um, or I'm trying to fight the former world champions, maybe. Um, not sure who all there. Uh, Keith Thurman, if he, if he ain't back in title to contention. Sean Porter, um, you know, Danny Garcia. This is, should be his last fight at welterweight, according to him. So it ain't too many options, at, you know, as far as four former world champions, Omar Figueroa, um, you know, Ugas, they never touched the title, but maybe that's something they may entertain. Ortiz is the gold champion. Um, uh, Kyle Velasquez. And then after you fight one or two of those guys, then maybe he can challenge for a world title. Then maybe he'd be ready for uh, Terrence Crawford. Also, you got Ennis. Josh Kelly still hanging around there. Some people believe in Conor Ben. Some people don't. Um, you know, maybe Adrian Broner fight for him. He called him. I don't think Broner would do that. Maybe you can get, uh, you know, the Regis or Jose Ramirez. Well, if Jose Ramirez is to fight, then they got the same coach. My bad. But if Josh Taylor lose and come up to 40 versus Jose or Regis or Hooker, I like kind of those guys after this fight with a Vargas. I like Hooker, Regis, Kavalaskis. You know what I'm saying? I like those type of fights that he can get, but right now Crawford is a lot, is too much, and people gonna come here and say, "Oh, Virgil Tease is going to beat Crawford." Yeah, you're tripping homes. I'm like, okay, put your money where your mouth is. You know that kid ain't. The, we don't know if he can take it on the chops. We don't know if he can handle. You know half the arsenal that Crawford got. Can he get in there and handle a guy that can stick and move? And I know Brad Solomon. I don't even know who the hell that is. You know he handled Herrera. Herrera's an older fighter, but. You know, Herrera, he do got a lot of irky-jerky movement, but he don't carry the power or the skill that Crawford carry. I just think right now, if he wait a couple years for Crawford and Spencer to be in his benefit because he's going to get more experience, he's going to be stronger, um, he's going to be younger. Crawford be, what, 34 years old? I'm not sure how old Ortiz is. Was he 22, 21, 23? Just, it just work out better. His matchmakers will know what to do with him. Um, like I said, if I'm him, after Vargas, I'll try to get a Ray Robinson. After Robinson, I'm looking at a Kavalaskis. I'm looking at, you know, um, you know, maybe a Keith, you know, maybe, you know, maybe some some guys like that, man. Then we kind of tiptoe up on a world championship. But I think if we do fight, you know, Errol Spence, it'll be a uh, fifty four. Be hundred and fifty four pounds. But Crawford right now, it is just, you know, stretch season. I got Crawford stopping him. Unless Ortiz is real tough, but the thing about it is 
going a hard 12 and 10 with a real professional, you know, it's tough. You know, real talk. And that's something that Ryan fight Luke Campbell, he's going to find out. It's levels to, to these C and these D, E level fighters that they're fighting. When you step up to, you know, even the B level, it's the reason why you step up from E level, D level opponents to C level opponents to B minus level opponents to B level to B plus the A level opponents because you don't want to miss a significant milestone or mark in development. You know, you talking about can you t if you get hurt, what do we need to do? Or if you get a cut, we we've been there before. What do we need to do? All right, fighting a guy that got power but don't got no skill. If we get cracked, how do we survive? You know, fighting the inside guard. You know, how do we hold our own on the inside? Do we got to make adjustments? You know, Floyd found that out with Castillo. You know, if we fight a boxing mover, we have problems with, with the movement. All right. We survived this fight. Let's go into the ring, learn how to cut the ring off, learn how to, you know, touch the body. You've seen Canelo maturation from Floyd to Lara. His answer to cut the ring off, to slow Lara off, was dropping a, a hook whenever, wherever Lara was rolling out at, and it slowed, it slowed Lara's output out. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if you can take it on the chops, if you can maintain with a cut, if you can go a deep 10 or 12 rounds, pretty tough. All those marks, those boxes off. And it'll also help you refine your skills. So when you get to the Crawford, Earl Spence, Pacquiao level, you'll be well prepared. But also, it buys time. Those fighters that we're talking about, Crawford, Spence, Pacquiao, Taylor, Ramirez, Mikey, Ugas, Boost Putin, if he comes back from his fellow drives, Chess, Kowalowski, all they're going to be doing is taking more and more punishment. They're getting older and older. And as a grown man, it's going to be harder to make 147 pounds. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm always on the caution of taking your time. There are fighters that are special that can jump in and move move up fast. They got a lot of amateur fights, but don't forget, Lomachenko was one of those dudes, and he slipped, he falling, he couldn't get up. You know, he lost to Orlando Salido, so he got a blemish on his resume. If he took his time a little bit more, then he would have he'd have been on top. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'll put the article link in the description. Uh, like I said, Crawford's going to... Right now, Crawford gonna beat him in submissions. It's too, it's too premature, and the resume ain't quite there yet. But I will hold off. Maybe in two years, it's a much more competitive fight. But let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you got business questions, inquiry, response your video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Appreciate the love, support. Um, cash App, PayPal, description. Best way to donate is share the video. One time for the one time. Look forward to your comments. We gone.